So here we are, Worship Wednesday. I hope you guys are all doing great out there. It is the middle of the week, and I'm hoping that you are having a great week while you are working or at home or wherever you are at. Thank you for joining us here today for our short little oasis in the middle of the week where we do a very, very short sort of a devotional and some music recommendations. Uh, usually I'll do either a song or a video of a song, but recently a lot of that keeps getting me flagged for copyright violations and gets my stream taken down midstream. So today I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to sing you a song in a little bit. And on top of that, uh, I've got a recommendation for a worship tune for you toward the end, and I'll just put up the name and you can go check it out yourself on YouTube. So listen, folks, I hope that you are finding your way in with us today. If you are, throw something up in the comment section so that I can see that you have arrived, and uh, I will go over there really quick and take a peek and see who is here to hang out with us this morning. What's up, Big Frank in Arizona? Good to see you, buddy. And Penny is with us right here, uh, not too far from here at, at work, I think. Yes, she's at work today. Uh, Mike, Big Mike. All right. What's up, preacher man? Now you're in France, dude. Usually, usually he's in Italy. So uh, <laughs> Mike's joining us from France today. Very cool, man. Good to see you, brother. And Brenda is joining us from the great, uh, wonderful metropolis of New Lenox. How funny is that? Debbie, what is up? Welcome. I'm so glad to see you around and, and doing all these goofy things that we do online and being a part of it. It's always good to have you here. Uh, Malta, not Italy. I just keep getting it wrong. It's right next to that great big boot on the map. So there you go, Mike. You're Maltese now. There we go. All right. Linda from, uh, <laughs> I'm still laughing about Mike's thing. Linda from Oklahoma. Good morning. Faye says, where else would I be? Well, that's a good question. I, for some reason, I'm used to Tuesday nights where I go, oh, she's right upstairs. Well, today you're at work. So there you go. I got a little bit confused. My brain doesn't work. Tammy says, hello from Diego and Nurse Tammy. So she's at work with her patient today. Awesome. Good to have you on board with us. All right. Big Mike. Uh, Madonna. <laughs> okay, get out of here, man. You're so funny, dude. All right. Big Bob is here. I hope you're not driving that semi and riding at the same time, man. Linda says, good morning. All right. Very cool. Well, I'm glad that you guys are here. Listen, folks, we are going to have a good devotional here, and it's going to be based on two. Everybody hold up two fingers because two is better than one, right? Right, right, right. Two dollars is better than one dollar. I'll tell you that. I've been broke lots of times. What's up, Danielle? This is uh, this is my brother-in-law's girlfriend. Awesome. Good to see you. Good morning to you. Right on. Uh, keep trucking, Bob. Don't even tell me if you're behind the wheel of that 18 wheeler and you're watching this and typing and texting. I don't even want to know. So let's open up in a word of prayer. And then I have a question for you as always. And, uh, we are going to be jumping right in. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this little opportunity in the middle of the week to open up a little piece of your word, see how we can apply that to our lives and see what we can learn from each other and from you. So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. We've got a couple more things happening here. Linda says extra prayers for this afternoon. we got a big need today. All right, Linda, we'll definitely be praying about that. Good for We'll be jumping on that right away. Debbie says, jumping on from work over my lunch break. Uh, thanks to her brother, Big Kevin, for letting me know about this. Well, welcome again. All right. Here's my question. Here's my question for you guys today. What is a time, and I want you to throw something up in the comments section for me, because when people watch this back, they read the comments to see how it all goes together. So, so here's my question. I mean, it's going to be a kind of two or three parts. So you can answer whichever part of this you want, but I want you to try to give me an answer. When is a time that you have ever been in need? That you've ever been in need? And maybe go one step further. Maybe tell us about a time, just real briefly, and I'll read some of these back that, that when people write this. Tell us about a time when you definitely were either sick or needed the help of somebody. Now, that, that can be anything. It could have been you got bad news from the doctor and you just wanted a friend to talk to, so you made a phone call. It could be that you know everything fell apart and you have to relocate, and so you're moving to another part of the country, so you need help. Or maybe something happened at work and you didn't expect it. And now it's like you're, you're calling on, on your friends and saying, listen, I need some wise counsel. So all I'm asking is, have you ever been in a position where you needed help 
from somebody. Again, it could be through sickness. It could be job related. It could be family related. It could be all kinds of things. So throw something up in the comment section if you have ever experienced a time in your life when you needed help from someone. And while you are contemplating that, let me just throw a couple things up because because here, here's the big push today, guys. Two are better than one. We're going to look at a little text out of Ecclesiastes 4 in just a minute. But two are better than one. Now, of course, in a situation where you love somebody and it's a monogamous relationship, then, you know, the two of you together basically are one flesh. So so that's great. You don't want more than, um, than two people involved in that. But this is talking about something different. This is talking about when you simply need a friend and you need someone to talk to or you need help in some way. So two are better than one. See, sometimes, even recently, we get news like this. You know, we tested positive for something. Maybe you need meals. We do that um, at our church. If you're part of this church and, you know, you're part of the church body here, and we find out you're sick and you're at home and you need some help with meals, we set that up. Our, we have a gal that's on staff here. Um, she's lay staff, meaning she works outside of the church, but she's also on staff at the church. Her name is Dawn. And and Dawn, I'm going to tell you what, man, she is on it. And if someone is sick, she sets up meals. She'll put something online like right now. And all of a sudden, meals will start showing up at people's places. Because sometimes people get sick. And sometimes you need somebody because you're not feeling well. You need somebody to give you a little bit of medicine to help you out. How many of you remember that when mom used to come after you with the stuff to say, this will be good for you. Just take it. I remember those days. What else happens? What else can make us sick and in need of people? You know, there's all this stuff going around today the last two years. It's like almost everyone you know has either been infected with some form of this. I won't say what it is. I don't want to get like flagged by Facebook for giving false information or anything like that. But it seems as though either you've been exposed to it or you know somebody that has. And then, of course, you can end up sick. I've known people that have never been in the hospital over it. I know entire families that have been sick. And it's no fun. I just got a couple more pictures here for you. It's no fun to be this person where you're sitting there and the world is falling around, falling apart around you. And you simply need a little bit of help. You just need a friend. You need somebody. It could be anything. So, folks, I'm going to jump over to the comment section. What's a time in your life when you've had a need for a friend or maybe wise counsel or whatever? So let's just take a look. Penny says, oh, yes. I don't remember what that's about, but okay. Awesome. Brenda, the day my husband was promoted to heaven and the months that followed. Yes, Ron, her husband, was the first um, greeter we ever had at Revolution Church. And then shortly after we launched this church over eight years ago, he uh, he passed. Uh, the Lord took him to heaven. So I, I remember those days. That's when you needed a friend. I remember that. And we came around you, and we still do because we love you. Tammy says, hugely pregnant in a clown suit and wig, coming from a party when a car broke down. I was jumping and waving on the roadside trying to get help, and cars would honk, smile, and wave. You've told me about this before, where she was like, you know, out to here with the baby in her stomach and she had on a clown suit because she was doing some entertaining for kids and her car broke down. And as she flapped around and was trying to get people's attention, they just figured it was a clown doing funny things on the side of the road. So they're beeping and waving. She actually needed help and people just drove away like a Seinfeld episode. How weird is that? Penny says, this is why we need to surround ourselves with godly believers. I totally agree with that. Yeah, that's very good. Very good. So if you have a story or if you have something that you can that you can put down uh, that tells us about a time when you had a need, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. I'm going to show you the text for today. It's just a couple of short verses. And again, we try to do this whole thing in like 15 minutes on a Wednesday. Sometimes we make it, sometimes we don't. But it's from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Many of you have heard this before, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Beginning in verse 9, it says, two are better than one. Now, why? Because they have a good reward for their toil, which means for their work, for their for their output of labor. And number uh, verse 10, if one of them falls or if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. In other words, the person with them can, can lift you up and be there to bear the burden with you if you fall down. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. What's the big purpose here? If you are isolated or isolating yourself and staying away from everybody, then if you're in need at any time, it's difficult to get those needs met because you're isolated. That's why it's so dangerous for us to be isolated. We, we need to always do our best 
to, to be in community to one another. I'll get into that in just a minute. Two more verses. Verse 11. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? If you've ever, if you've ever been camping, I remember this, uh, you know, when I was a kid, you, you get a bunch of kids in a tent um, and it's freezing. Well, guess what, man? If everybody sort of piles into a big dog pile, pretty soon everybody's warm because because body heat just does that. But anyway, it says, how can one keep warm alone? Well, you can't. You can't. And verse 12, their last verse. And though a man might prevail against one who is alone. In other words, if you get attacked somewhere, if you get if you get mugged, if you get violated, if you get maybe, you know, somebody sneaks up on you um, and you're all by yourself. Two people could easily take advantage of you. Now watch this, watch this. A threefold cord is not quickly broken, which simply means this. To be in community is better than to not be in community. To be around godly people who love you and have a have a vested interest in your well-being will always serve you better than being what some people call being the lone ranger. Being the person that I don't need nobody, I don't need nothing, and I've got myself and, you know, just it's just me and Jesus. Well, that's great. But when there's a time of need, it's nice to have brothers and sisters to lean on. It's nice to have brothers and sisters in the Lord that you know have your best interest at heart to lean on. Um, what's Daniel saying? Need support daily, raising kids, navigating life, relationships, and living his word. Amen. Very, very good. Thank you for sharing that, Danielle. That's awesome. Uh, it's so good to have you on here, by the way. She's like family. This is a, that picture there that you see is Danielle and Penny's youngest brother, Tom. Um, anyway, good to see you guys. It's good to see you on here. So, so there it is. There it is. Ecclesiastes chapter four is talking about in this area that when you're isolated and alone, it's harder to do things in life. It's hard when you need help. It's hard when you fall down to get back up. But if you have somebody that has your back, if you have somebody that cares about you in a godly loving way, doesn't want to take advantage of you, but instead wants to look out for you like a brother or sister in Christ, it's great to have them around because when you are in trouble, they are there to help. They're there to help. I remember in 2014, um, we were at a, a youth group thing at one of the one of the parents' houses that were where we had a bunch of our teenage kids there. And um, some of you that are part of this church will remember the time when I was playing basketball with the teenage kids. They're like college age kids and teens, and I was in um, just a t-shirt, a pair of blue jeans, and a pair of cowboy boots. I didn't know that a pickup game of basketball was going to ensue. And of course, we got college age kids, and then we got like high school age kids, and they're playing. And and I like to play. I'm not very good, but I like to I like to compete. I like to compete. And so they're all giving me a hard time. Come on, Pastor Billy, get in here. You're just an old man. You don't want to come play with us because we're got we got your number. You can't even keep up with us. I was like, oh man, I got to get in there. So cowboy boots and blue jeans and all. I jumped on the court, and I played with with these you know like teenage kids and, and early 20s kids. And we we're having a great time. And I'll never forget, I was like, oh man, I got to show them what I used to be able to do when I was younger. So I called for the ball. Somebody passed me the ball. Man, I drove for the hoop and went up off my left leg. I'm just going to lay it up. I thought I'll get like right up next to the rim. It'll look like I'm going to slam dunk, but I'll just lay it up. It'll be easy two points and all the kids will go, whoa, that is so cool. Well, man, I charged to the hoop like a water buffalo and I went off my left leg and I'll never forget the sound of my kneecap and the tendon underneath of it going. Whoosh. It sounded like you took a cantaloupe and did and ripped a cantaloupe slowly open. That gross, disgusting sound of tearing open a cantaloupe. That's what it sounded like. Man, I ended up on the ground. My kneecap shot from where it was supposed to be way up into my thigh because the tendon that holds it in place had snapped. So my kneecap shot up like a rubber band into my thigh. There I am laying on the court as the ambulance is called. Why am I telling you this? There's no way. <laughs> and I tried. There was no way I was going to get up on my own and get into that ambulance. Trust me. I was like, you know what? Pain is nothing to me. I, I can take anything. I'm tough, right? I grabbed a hold of that kneecap. I started to shove it back down into place. And luckily, a couple of the, uh, you know, 20-somethings that were there were EMTs. They're like, no, 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 no. Don't do that. You're going to make it worse. Just wait for help. So there I was, laying on the basketball court, waiting for help. So when the ambulance arrived, a bunch of the kids helped out. They got me on the gurney or whatever you call it, that, that transport thing. And whoosh, they stuck me in the back of the ambulance. Guess what? 
There's no way in God's green earth with that busted leg like that, there's no way I was going to get up and maneuver onto the top of that gurney and hop like, you know, I'm on the magic carpet into the back of that ambulance. I needed people around me to help me because I was in a position where I was injured and I was in a position where it was not good to be alone. So check this out. Let me go back to the comments section, see what people are writing down. Brenda says there's such a big difference in needing help and realizing you need help or even be willing to accept the help that you need. Man, this is good. I've always struggled with that. Grateful to have people in my life that see past my inabilities. Uh, you and me both, sister, I'll tell you what. Um, Daniel says, I'm glad I caught you live. Good, I'm glad you did too. What's up, Mick? <laughs> A great story. Our minds are forever young, bodies not so much. Brother, you know, you know. Mick and I, man, <laughs> we, as I said before, man, we go way back, way, way back in, in the music industry together. I'm talking about to the late 1980s. So, yeah, um, our bodies are getting old, my friend. We're getting old. I'm loving your beard, and uh, I don't care what anybody says. I think it's magnificent. I dig it, man. So anyway, um, I'm going to sing you a song. Uh, how, about, how about if we do that? So let's do this together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen, and I'm going to put up some um, lyrics. I'm going to ask you to sing along. We're just going to do like a chorus of a really familiar song. Watch this. All right. <laughs> All right. Ah! Oh, I'm so bad at this. Oh, man. Okay. I need, I need a millennial, somebody to help me because I can barely work my own computer. So that's why I have my guitar here today. Nothing crazy, nothing loud. We're not going to do Metallica or anything like that. But I figured I'd pull something that most people would recognize. And I have no idea how the mix is turning out. It's probably going to be horrible because I got a little tiny amp behind me. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but let's do this. Now, if you know the words, help me out. Ready? I got the words up there for you. You just call on me brother when you need a hand we all need somebody to lean on i just might have a problem that you understand we all need somebody to lean on here we go lean on me when you're not strong and i'll be your friend and I'll help you carry on me on me Cause it won't be long Till I will need somebody to lean on See, it's not so hard Let's do it again You just call on me, brother When you need a hand We all need somebody to lean on I just might have a problem that you understand we all need somebody to lean here we go lean on me then you're not strong and I'll be your friend I'll help you carry on lean on me for it won't be long till I'm gonna need Somebody to lean on, lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend, and I'll help you carry on. Lean on me, cause it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Somebody to lean on. Oh, yeah. Come on now. I want to see some tips. I'm going to put out my tip jar. That's what we're going to do next. All right. We go back to the comment section. Here we go. All right. Mick's laughing about my story. Okay. Oh, I already got that. Penny says, good. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Tammy says, if we pay it forward in life while we're able, then when we're in need, people will line up to help us. That's funny that you say that. Because I have a note here. I have a note here. Look at how funny this is. Look at that. My hands are a little shaky. Right there. That's a little better. Pay it forward. You know what? Remember I told you earlier, when people are sick in our church and they need something, we are on it. We are on it. We have people like Don who runs, I told you earlier, our fishes and loaves ministry. And if you're sick at home and you need help, man, we got meals there. Um, we always try to look out for one another. Let's try this, guys and gals. Let's pay it forward. Let's be good to each other. Let's provide good things for one another. Let's look out for each other. 
And let's do the whole thing where we understand that we need each other. Part of that, folks, is be at church on Sunday. If you have a church that you're that you're um, nearby and that you can attend, don't be the lone lone ranger sitting at home going, "I'll just read my Bible." You know what? Get involved in in biblical community. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter ten, verse twenty five, "Do not stop gathering together for religious worship purposes, as some are in the habit of doing." Why did you say that? Because if you pull away from your connected group of people, eventually you're isolated from that connected group of people and you don't have access to fellowship, friendship, help when you need it, things like that. Now, I'm going to give you a recommendation for a worship song today and that is going to come with this right here. I'm not going to play it because last time I played a song, I got another copyright strike and they killed the live stream on Facebook. You had to go to uh, YouTube to watch it. This is streaming right now live on Facebook and on YouTube on my channel. But this is a, a Christian band called Need to Breathe. That's not a typo. It's one long word of three words strung together. It's called Need to Breathe. And the song that, that specifically talks about this is called Brother or Brother Let Me Be Your Shelter. You can put that into YouTube and check it out. There, you'll find hundreds of thousands of hits on that stuff. And it's all good. So again, Need to Breathe. Check it out today. Brother or Brother Let Me Be Your Shelter. That's my recommendation for today. Darla says, late but here. Good. We're almost finished. That's awesome. But hey, glad that you made it, uh, Darla and George. Penny says, worship song, much better than Metallica. Okay, because of what we're doing, I'll say, sure. Okay. But I, I yeah, okay. I'll just leave that alone. There we go. So, need to breathe. That's going to be my recommendation for today. Again, need to breathe. Brother, let me be your shelter. Type that into YouTube and you will find a gazillion in one uh, ways to check that song out. So thank you for joining me. We're going to sign off in just a minute. I'm just going to check the comments one more time here. Awesome song recommendation. Great cover. of <laughs> That was horrible cover of Lean on Me, but it was still fun to do. I love doing that kind of stuff. Uh, Tammy says there's a local group of young people called Snow Angels who shovel snow for the elderly. Super helpful. That's great. I love that. Love that song and that group. Good, good. Glad to hear it. Tell you what, I'm going to close in a word of prayer and uh, I'll give you one more thing and then we will call it a day. So Lord, I thank you for this time we've had. I thank you for, for your word in Ecclesiastes that, that two are better than one so that when we fall down, we have someone there to pick us up and to help us out. And God, I pray that you would help us to be thinking even now, is there someone that we can reach out to that may need help this day, right now, today? Is there someone who can use a meal? Is there someone that can use a ride to an appointment? Is there someone who needs their, their sidewalk or their driveway shoveled, the snow shoveled out of it? Is there someone who needs, you know, maybe some de-icer thrown on their driveway so that they can get into their car? Is there someone who needs the garbage cans taken to the road? Is there someone who needs help? Bring that to mind. Lord, we pray through the power of the Holy Spirit. You would do that right now, right now. Make a, make a divine intervention in our brain and in our work day. And let us know if there's someone, is there someone that we can reach out and help today? In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, folks, let me take one more peek. At, okay, we're good. We're caught up on uh, comments in the comment section. Thank you for joining me for this version of Worship Wednesday, this version, for this episode, whatever you want to call it, of Worship Wednesday. I love you guys. I'm glad that you made it. And again, check out. That song by Need to Breathe called Brother, Let Me Be Your Shelter. Thanks for joining me. Have a fantastic Wednesday, and uh, we will see you soon.